you're thinking about getting a saltwater aquarium but you're not sure what equipment you need and the equipment you want this video is going to tell you what i think you need to make a really really successful aquarium Hi, I'm Richard from The Beginner's Reef and I'm here to help you succeed with your saltwater aquarium by providing you with great information, awesome resources and really helpful tips. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We've got new videos coming out every week and anything that I mentioned in this video, you can find it in the video notes below. Make sure to stick around to the end because I've got a great beginner's tip that I hope you'll find really useful. So today's video is all about the stuff that you need versus the stuff that you want to get your aquarium set up. I get this asked all the time because aquarium equipment is expensive and there's so much to choose from and when you're a beginner knowing what you need and what you don't need can be really really difficult and this video is going to helpfully go through and describe all the things that I personally recommend that you get as a need and some of the things that you can hold off until you've got a bit more cash in the bank that then you can purchase a little bit later on. So the main thing that we are aiming for, there's three things in an aquarium, especially a saltwater aquarium. The first one is stability. As you begin to progress through this journey, you're obviously going to want to start to get into corals and corals require the most stable water parameters to be able to survive and thrive, especially SPS corals. So stability is the first thing that we're trying to achieve. The second thing that we're trying to control is nutrients. Nutrients are what cause so many problems in your aquarium. And nutrients are caused by too much feeding, too much livestock, not enough detritus removal and detritus is basically the waste that is breaking down sometimes you'll see it's like brown dust collecting on your sand bed um, so we need to have the detritus removed and we basically want to have the tank clean and healthy so that the load on the biological filtration is in balance and the third thing we're after with our aquarium is basically to have healthy livestock as custodians of this beautiful box of mother nature's coral reef it's our job to ensure that whatever we put in there is going to thrive and live a healthy life for as long as it can and by doing that they're going to reward us with active swimming around beautiful deep colorations vivid patterns and just pure beauty that is the reason why we have this thing in our home or our office so the basic needs for any saltwater aquarium are broken down into these 11 things that in my opinion are really important and these things I think should be met first and then other things can come after. So the first one is your temperature control. So a heater and or a chiller. Now temperature control of your water is really important. You want to try and keep your water somewhere around the 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit mark and keeping it there is going to add to the stability of your aquarium. I live in a place where it goes down to minus 40 in winter and it can go up to plus 40 in summer. So for me, I've had to have both. I have two heaters that are running my tank for redundancy because I've had one heater fail once and luckily I caught it because my aquarium controller alarmed out that the temperature was getting low and I had a spare so I was able to swap it over since that day I always have two heaters in my first summer of living here I soon found out that my tank temperature was starting to climb and climb and climb even though we have air conditioning in the house it was still fluctuating enough where my temperature was getting up to about 83 degrees Fahrenheit and I didn't like that I like to keep my tank at 78 degrees and it was getting way too hot so I invested in a chiller and chillers can be quite expensive but once I had my two heaters and my chiller connected to my aquarium controller my tank temperature was rock solid at 78 plus or minus 0.2 of a degree for the entire year and actually by doing that 
I saw my coral start to increase in growth. Um, so temperature control is the first thing that you've got to invest a little bit of money into. Now number two is the protein skimmer. Now this one is controversial. A lot of people have run aquariums without protein skimmers and I tend to find that it's the smaller aquariums, like less than 40, 50 gallons and they have good water change and maintenance procedures. But to me, a protein skimmer is the fundamental backbone of your filtration for your aquarium. The protein skimmer is going to work side by side with your nitrifying bacteria, but the protein skimmer is there to basically remove the dissolved organic compounds from your water and physically get them out of the water into the collection cup so they can be thrown away. They work really good and by having a protein skimmer it allows you to have a bit of a higher bio load so you can have a few more fish and it allows you a little bit more flexibility in your maintenance just in case sometimes life can get busy and having a protein skimmer just gives you that little bit of a buffer zone to keep in your water parameters stable so protein skimmer is definitely worth investing that's why it's number two on my need list number three is your biological filter media and your biological filter is made up of your nitrifying bacteria primarily your nitrosomonas bacteria and your nitrobacter bacteria and these are two types of bacteria that colonize every surface in your aquarium the more surface area you can provide the more bacteria is going to colonize and be able to process more waste so in essence the more bacteria you have the higher bio load you can have so you can keep more livestock now there's two ways that you can provide more surface area for this bacteria and the first one is by having rock either by having live rock or dry rock which will then become live rock because they provide the backbone for a huge massive surface area the second way is marine pure blocks or spheres if you've got an all-in-one aquarium or if you have an aquarium with a sump you can buy these blocks or spheres and put them in an area of your filter compartment and they just provide super super huge amounts of surface area for more bacteria to colonize and more surface area means more bacteria more bacteria means more livestock and we all want a nice full aquarium number four on my list is some form of random flow now this isn't so important when you have fish but as you start to get into corals you're going to need to provide random flow patterns to keep the corals thriving and it also helps to prevent dead spots of flow within your aquarium and this can be as simple as having a rotating nozzle deflector that you can get to put on the outlet nozzle of your all-in-one aquarium or you can go all the way through to uh, DC controlled pumps, wave makers and gyro pumps that can create really good random flow using varying waveform patterns, varying speeds and they are worth their weight in gold. So when you get, start to get into corals, I would definitely, definitely put the need for a random flow generator. Okay, number five on my list is your light. Now, if you are setting up a reef tank or if you are planning to set up a reef tank, you want to buy one light, spend the money on it and buy it once. Now, lights can be expensive, but they are by far the best investment you can make to successful coral growth in the future. Now, there's many people that go onto Amazon and they're always asking about these $50 lights, these $80 lights, and in my opinion, I don't like a light that's under 100 bucks. It's, I've tried the cheaper lights, I made my own DIY LED lights for my current tank and I ended up having to supplement it with 45 bulbs because they just weren't powerful enough. So spend a little bit of money to start with, get a good light system from the get-go 
and it will last you for years, especially if it's an LED light. And the good thing with LED lights is you can always upgrade them. So if you get a bigger tank, you can add more to them. So things like the AI Prime HDs, the Kessels, the Ecotech Radions, you can buy one, and if you get a bigger tank, you just add another one to it. Um, they are expensive, but if you end up buying a $100 light, and then you end up buying, uh, say, a HD Prime 16 or 32, something like that, you've then gone and wasted 100 bucks on the cheaper light. So I always advocate, buy the best light you can, buy it once and it will last you, and you won't have to worry about a poor, underperforming quality light if you get a good, good light. I've got a really good article, you can find in the link below, and it's all about the best recommended lights for soft corals, LPS corals, and SPS corals. Um, so make sure you go check that out. I think that'll be really, really handy for you. Okay, the next basic need is your source water. And this one is a tough one. It's another one that can cost you 100, 200 bucks before you even get to your aquarium. But your source water is everything in, the, in your aquarium. Just think about your environment. You know, would you rather live in a city like Tokyo or Shanghai where it's just thick with pollution? Or would you rather be living in somewhere that has pristine air quality like the Swiss Alps or the Canadian Rockies? I know which one I would pick. And your aquarium water is the same. The water that comes from your tap, either you're either on a well or you're on city water, and that can be full of heavy metals, phosphates, nitrates, um, silicates, you name it, it can be full of it. And getting rid of those is going to really, really help the health of your fish, your corals, and it's also going to help prevent algae. And the best way that I recommend to do this is to purchase an RODI water filtration unit. Um, there's a link below to a great selection. I've also got a link below to an article that I wrote just on RODI units. Um, but they they are another expense and for a lot of people they can't afford that. So the second best option is to get a bottle of Prime. And this is a really good well used product that you can add to tap water at the recommended dosage and it's going to buffer the water and bind up a lot of those heavy compounds and elements in there so they can be removed by your aquarium filtration. It's not as good as RODI water, but it's a really good second best option. And for a bottle for about 10, 15 bucks as a start, it's better than nothing. So just whatever you do, don't go and pour water from the tap straight into your salt mixing bucket and start mixing salt because you will be having algae troubles from day one. Okay, the next two I've kind of lumped together and they are basically your rock and your sand. Now, dry rock, live rock, dry sand, live sand, it's a big debate in the hobby. Some people like both to be live, some people like them both to be dry. It's all personal preference. You have to go and do a bit of research on you know, the difference between live rock and dry rock and dry sand and live sand. Again, I've got links links below to the Beginners Reef website with articles in there talking just about those. Um, but again, it's all about your biological filtration. If you get live rock and live sand, they've already got bacteria in there. They've already been living in a saltwater environment, so they're already going to have a good foundation of bacteria to get your aquarium started. And like any good structure, a solid foundation provides for a good, solid growth and live rock and live sand and your good biological filtration are going to get your aquarium off to a good start so you've got to have good good clean sand i wouldn't recommend getting anything off the beach just go and spend a couple of hundred bucks if you've got a big aquarium on some bags of sand get your rock put it in there and you're going to be off to a good start the next item on my list is a refractometer because it is 
and paramount to know exactly how much salt is in your water. Um, I don't like using the hydrometers, like the swing arm types. I'm not a fan of those, they're very inaccurate. They can give you different results and they're just, I always tell people to stay away from them. Yes, they're cheaper, but for 30 bucks, just go and get yourself a refractometer and it's gonna tell you exactly what your salinity is in your aquarium. Measuring accurate salinity is going to make sure that each time you do your water change and each time you check for evaporation, you're going to know exactly what the salinity level is in your aquarium. And this leads me on to the next thing is good quality test kits. Stay away from the test strips and also stay away from the API test kits. The test kits that I really recommend are the NIOS test kits Red Sea test kits, the Salifert test kits, and also the HANA digital checkers. Um, these are really good, high quality, well used, good pedigree testing systems. And again, you need to know exactly what your water parameters are to be able to adjust them. So when you start getting into corals, you're going to be wanting to measure your alkalinity, your calcium, your magnesium, and you're going to be doing this regularly. Uh, pH is one you're going to be measuring straight away. Nitrate, nitrite, you name it, there are a lot of parameters that you need to be monitoring, but you need to have accurate results. Because if you have inaccurate test results, then whatever you do to change that parameter in the aquarium is going to be wrong. And if it goes wrong too far in any direction, your fish are going to be floating or your corals are going to be going white and dying. So good quality test kits are on my need list. And the last one on my need list is a simple digital thermometer. You can get them for under 10 bucks and they're really easy. You just stick them on the side, put the probe in the water, and each time you walk past the aquarium, just look at the screen. It tells you exactly what it is. And yeah, super easy. They're a lot easier to read than the actual like, mercury style ones that you can stick on the inside of your tank. I hate them, they're a nightmare. The other cool thing with some of the digital thermometers is they have high and low alarms that you can set. Um, so another perfect indication if your heater fails or if it's getting too hot in your house and your tank temperature starting to arise then this thing's going to start squawking at you so basic needs thermometer finishes it out so on my want list oh man where do we start <laughs> there's so many cool things for your aquarium but the first thing on my want list if you haven't been able to get one already is that RODI water filter because putting good quality water into your aquarium is the basis in which your fish and your corals are going to live. If you're having serious algae problems then I can guarantee you've probably got poor source water. Um, it's, oh, it's worth its weight in gold. For 200 bucks you put it on there, set it, make your top off water with it, do your water change water with it. If you get it before your aquarium, make sure you fill your aquarium with the water from it. And um, it's just such a good investment. And that's why it's number one on my want list. Number two on my want list is an automatic top off system. And when I found out about this gadget, oh, I can't even remember how long ago it was. Look, over 10 years for sure, 15 maybe. Um, I was like, oh my God, how did I not have one of these before? And basically what it is, is your aquarium is at 80 degrees or roughly around there, and it evaporates water every day. Mine evaporates about a gallon of water, fresh water every day. So because your salt doesn't evaporate, it gets left behind in the aquarium. So what happens is, is your water evaporates, your salt stays the same. So the ratio of salt compared to water in the aquarium will start rising because the water is reducing. So in essence, your aquarium is gonna get saltier. If you let it go on too long, the salinity is just gonna be so high, it's gonna kill everything in your aquarium. So what you want to do is regularly top off for the evaporation loss with fresh water. Now, if you don't have an automatic top off system, 
you gotta do this by hand every day. You know, my 75 gallon, well, it's about a 90 gallon system with my sump and my frag tank, except it does a gallon a day. This is fine whilst I'm at home, but what if you go on vacation for a week, two weeks? You know, that's 14, 15 gallons on a two week vacation. That's a lot of water that's evaporated and my salinity is gonna be through the roof. So an automatic top off system is a super, super great gadget. They start at around about 100 bucks and it's basically a reservoir with fresh water and it has a little sensor. When the water drops, the sensor sees it, turns on the pump, pumps the water back in, water level rises back to where it should be, shuts off and it sits there ready to go for the next time. You just have to keep the reservoir filled. Super, super handy gadget and for 100 bucks, it's got to be on your first Christmas list. It's super, super life saving. Okay, number three on my list is a quarantine tank system. And this might sound overkill to a lot of aquarists. And it took me a long time to get into a quarantine tank, but once I figured it out, it was so simple. You can set up a quarantine tank for 100, 100 bucks. You can have it sitting off somewhere if you don't have room where your aquarium is and it's oh it's a lifesaver um, i got a great article you can find in the links below about how you can easily set up a quarantine system and mine sits empty all the time i just have the sponge for my uh, little aqua clear filter sitting in my sump seeding and basically when i know i'm going to the fish store i will get my quarantine tank set up before i go take my sponge out of the sump, put it in the filter, get the heater running, get the filter running. So then I get back from the fish store, my fish will go straight into there, usually for four weeks minimum, and I'll treat them with cupramine and Prazipro as standard. Um, it treats all the internal, external parasites, bacteria, you name it, and touch wood. Since I've done my quarantine system, I've never had an illness in my tank. And if you've been in this hobby long enough on the forums, you can guarantee you'll see ick popping up in there every single week because people have bought a fish, put it into their tank, it's got ick, and now everything's got it. So for under 100 bucks, number three on my want list is a super simple quarantine setup. You won't regret it. Okay, number four on my list is if you can retrofit your aquarium or for your next aquarium is I really recommend installing a sump. If your aquarium is an all-in-one aquarium, great, they work just as good. But if you have an aquarium that doesn't have a sump and you've got all your equipment hanging on the side of it, try and get a sump for your next aquarium or see if you can get a retrofit kit for your aquarium so that you can put a sump on there. And to me, the whole idea of having a glass box of Mother Nature's ocean in your home or office is so that you can enjoy the beauty of the fish and the coral. The last thing you want is your eyes being drawn off to a skimmer hanging on the back and then a reactor hanging on the side, a refugium and all this just crap that hangs on the side and it takes away from the beauty of it. So if you can get a sump, put it in the aquarium stand or if you can set it up in a filtration room like I've been lucky enough to do, which is right below my aquarium in the basement. Um, it gives you increased water surface area. You can add stuff into it like the marine pure blocks, turn a refugium into there, and it just gets rid of all your equipment and gets it hidden out of sight so that you can enjoy Mother Nature's beauty. Um, it's, sometimes it's a tough one, but definitely if you are planning your tank now or if you're planning to get a new aquarium, a sump is, you've got to have a sump system in my opinion. They're worth their weight in gold. Number five on my list is an aquarium controller. Now this one is a big expense. I think aquarium controllers and high-end LED lights are pretty much the two most expensive things you can spend your cash on on your aquarium. And Aquarium controllers are, are tough to justify because you can start at about 800 bucks and just go up and up and up. Um, I'm fortunate enough I have an electronics background so I've built my own aquarium controller 
Um, but I can tell you now, I will never ever have an aquarium without an aquarium controller on it. To me, once I've spent more than $500 on my livestock, an aquarium controller is going on it because it will save you so much work, so much hassle and so much stress because it just looks after everything and it can tell you if something is going wrong. And if you catch it early enough, it can save your tank. The amount of aquariums I've seen that are like four, oh, they've got like five grand's worth of stuff in it and they've got one heater and no aquarium controller in there. And I'm just like, oh my God, it's like waiting for the apocalypse to happen. Um, and some of those owners are on there. Well, it's never happened before. Well, of course it's not. But when it does, you're gonna be crying. So um, an aquarium controller is a really, really good investment. Stick it on your Christmas wish list. Um, there's some really good ones out there. Again, check the links below. Another great article for you. Um, they're super handy, but they are expensive. But I'm telling you, once you've had one, you'll never have an aquarium without one. And the last one on my list is some form of battery backup or backup system. Um, it kind of comes into the aquarium controller. Once you've started to invest, you know, 500, 1,000 bucks in your aquarium, to have that just perish away because of a lack of power to your home is, it's unacceptable and it's heartbreaking and it's stressful. Uh, we had a house fire here just across the street about five or six years ago and the power company came and just went cut the power to the block and I live in an area we don't ever get power failures but that power was out for eight hours and I can tell you it was the longest eight hours of my life I didn't have a battery backup system at the time but I can tell you what the day afterwards I was planning my battery backup systems because I was so nervous my tank was going to crash and the only way I got around it was by getting an inverter to my car and a power cord and I was running my heater off there, I was running my pumps and my tank was good, my tank survived. But I tell you what, if I had been on vacation, there's no chance my aquarium would have survived eight hours without um, being supported by some form of power. So battery backups or a um, generator just get yourself sorted out and be prepared so that when you, it happens you're ready to go um, there's some great battery backup systems ecotech has some really good ones to run their pumps um, you've got the ice cap battery backups and then you have the uh, the tonsy safety connector as they call it where you can connect your own so Again, check the links below. I've got a article on battery backups and the different types and what you can use. Um, but again, you start to put a vast amount of money into your aquarium. Don't let it all be wasted because of a power failure. So those are just my needs and wants that I always kind of recommend to people when they ask me about, hey Rich, I'm wanting to set up a tank. What do I need? What do I want? Um, those two lists right there are what will get you started on a really good path forward, give you a really good solid foundation to allow your aquarium to grow, and some of the wants will just lighten your stress load, lighten your workload, and give you more time to enjoy your aquarium, because at the end of the day, that is what it's all about. I sit on my couch just watching my aquarium. My wife watches her crap on the TV. I watch my aquarium and I can tell you what, I'm enjoying watching far more than what she is. So it's all about enjoying your aquarium. Less time maintaining, more time enjoying. So my beginner's tip for this week is to check the second hands or the classified sections and also ask around on the Facebook groups and the forums for equipment because a lot of people start this hobby 
they go out and they have what I call shiny syndrome. They've got to have the shiny brand new, best of everything. They get six months in. Tanks full of algae because maybe they've not bought an RODI unit and their tank's just full of algae. They've tried everything, they've given up. You can pick up some awesome, awesome equipment for cheap. The chiller that I got, I picked up for a hundred bucks. It's a $450 chiller. It was a year old. I got it for a hundred bucks and it's been bulletproof. It's never missed a beat. Um, so just look around on the forums, ask around, hey, anybody got a protein skimmer they want to sell for a 75 gallon aquarium? Yeah, I've got one. Just then quickly jump on, look at the reviews, see the reviews for that skimmer, see if people have had good luck with it. Um, and then just give them cold hard cash, take it home, clean it up, get it in a vinegar bath, and uh, yeah, you can save some really, really good money. So just keep your eyes and ears open. The one thing I will be cautious of though is buying used aquariums. I bought my 75 gallon used, and it's one of those things that's like, yeah. I don't know the history of it and yeah if that thing ever bursts oh, my wife is gonna kill me um, but we're in the process of starting to look to to move house and we're gonna be moving across country so all my system is gonna be completely taken apart and probably sold off um, because yeah you know we're having an upgrade that's what we do so I'd stay away from used aquariums just because they can create such a mess if they burst but the equipment you can find some gold out there if you be patient, look around. And if you're planning your saltwater aquarium and you know the kind of equipment you want already, get looking, get asking, and um, get some really good equipment for really cheap prices. And uh, yeah, it'll allow you to spend a little bit extra on those want items. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video. I've got new videos coming out every week. And check out the two videos here, which I think you'll enjoy. Make sure you check out the links below. And if you liked what you saw today, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time.